Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of RTHD. In this episode, I want to talk about whether it's worth it to buy the new DJI Osmo Mobile 3, so stay tuned. <music> Alright guys, so um, the thing is that the new DJI Osmo Mobile 3 has been out for, I believe it's like, this is like the second day, it's it's launched yesterday, and um, the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, for those of you who don't know, is a gimbal that actually stabilizes your uh, phone recording. So basically you put the phone into this gimbal, a gimbal is basically some uh, a device that has motors and basically uh, stabilizes the footage. So for example, if you walk around uh, recording and that looks shaky, the gimbal is going to help um, smooth out that footage and make it look really crisp and not not clean but actually smooth, actually smooth, smooth movements and you know those are things that are, that look a little bit more cin cinematic and so forth. But anyways, I do actually have the Osmo Mobile 2. I have ordered the Osmo Mobile 3 but it doesn't come in as yet. Hopefully I'll have that in store uh, soon and I'll be able to you know go through a review and so forth with it. But I want to go over to the actual website um, to determine whether uh, you should. And I think you should. And this is why I want to go through the website so that um, we could see all the different new features that have actually come into play with the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 as opposed to the 2. So let's just switch over to the window section here. Um, this is the official website. And the official website, uh, you see DJI Osmo Mobile 3 transform your world. Now, um, one of the things I have to mention is, okay, good. So they have the, 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 the different features, the new features that that um, are supposed to be better than, of course, the older features on the mobile too. And uh, one of the things, of course, is the uh, foldability or the portability. Now, the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 suffered a, a bit from the size of the Osmo because um, the Osmo was like about a little, less, a little less than about a foot in height. And um, the thing about it is that, it, you know, it swings around and so forth and... Um, you know, when you have to pack that into like a backpack, that's not always a good idea because like you, I always, when I pack that into there, I, I'm always worried about if something will break, if something will bend and so forth. Um, so it's definitely, this, this upgrade is definitely something like you upgrade from like a, you know, like a DJI, uh, the Phantom 3 and convert it to the, the Mavic Air, which can actually fold. Well, this is kind of like how I think about the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. It's like... The foldable version, a smaller compact version, that's supposed to be a little bit better than the previous version. So portability, definitely, it folds in half, so it's like half the size of what it used to be, sort of, because, you know, you still, you still, still surface area is not half, but generally speaking, it's about half the size. Uh, you can actually purchase a, uh, a, a pouch um, where you could put it in as well, so I think it's like $10 more, um, and it comes also with a tripod as well, I did that, so... Hopefully, again, we'll be able to review that in a little while um, when I actually get it in. I, they said it was like 15 days, but that's beside the point. How, however long it takes, well, whatever. Um, now, one of the things that, that they also added is story mode. Now, this is not a, entirely any feature, really, with the Osmo Mobile. It's more the software that goes with the Osmo Mobile. And, D, and DJI tends to do that. Um, and I don't particularly agree with that because I feel like you know, software-wise, um, that shouldn't stop you from updating the mobile too so that it can do the same thing. With that being said, what the story mode is supposed to do is sort of give you a wizard where you could, like, um, record certain clips, like short clips, like two to four second clips, and join them up together. The software will join them up together and make, like, a story mode. Not something I would use because I prefer to just do editing and so forth um, with the software that I have, you know, either Filmora or... Um, the Adobe software Premiere and so forth um, uh, so that's you know that's neither here nor there but it's definitely supposed to be a benefit because it actually now uses the DJI Mimo app as opposed to I believe the Osmo Mobile used the DJI Go app um, it didn't use the DJI Go 4 app I believe it's the DJI Go app so um, I guess it's, it's going to be hopefully get rid of one app for the other one and eventually most of the other pieces of software is going to join, uh, other pieces of hardware is going to join in um, to, you know, the actual, um, to, to maybe just be one piece of software because those pieces of software is actually kind of large, it's like 250 megs and I believe was the size, or was it 140, it doesn't matter, but it's it's large, comp you know, for somebody who uh, might be limited with, with phone space, which I don't think you should because I mean, now phones are coming with like 128 gigabytes of space, so I, you know, just for those of you 
who um, I'll have to look at your, your memory storage. Um, so one of the other cool things that they is, uh, they're talking about is the gesture control. So with the gesture control, um, that is supposed to be where you, so it's sort of similar to like the Mavic Air where I think you could use like the peace sign or like you could use your hand and it's gonna either record or take a picture out, which I think is nice, but remember you will have to actually be running the uh, software to actually do that because like um, uh, on the phone itself because remember you can't you can't use like your normal camera uh, app to do that you'll have to actually use the DJI Mimo app to do that as well I'm, 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 I believe that that's gonna also use up some of your battery as well because of course just the control is also trying to focus and so forth on you as well um, but I think it's really really cool because that's something uh, that stops me a lot of the time from using the DJI Osmo 2 uh, because I cannot actually control it. Sometimes I want the Osmo to be a little bit further away. I want it to be my own cameraman, obviously, um, and, and track me and so forth. But uh, to switch it on, sometimes I have to walk to it, press it, press the phone on, record, and then walk back, which is uh, not entirely convenient. So I think that this gesture control is something I would use. I said that I would use the Mavic Air gesture control. I never really get around to it. But uh, this seems more safer to use than the Mavic Air flying away. I don't think it will. But, you know, the point is that the gesture control is there. And, um, you know, you don't always have to pay for a cameraman to necessarily do that recording and so forth. Um, with that being said, of course, there's Active Track 3.0. I haven't tested it, but they claim that Active Track is actually, um, it's actually going to be a lot better than, obviously, I guess, 2.0, 1.0, meaning that it's going to pick you, it's going to pick you up a, a bit better. Um, I think all this is also based on the process and the type of phone you have, because definitely you're going to need a faster phone, generally speaking. Maybe like the S10, maybe like, you know, that higher level phone compared to maybe like the S6. I have an S6 and an S10, but I don't think I'll be running it on the S6 anymore. I think that one of the issues that we were having, what I was having with Active Track, even with mo the Mobile 2, was that uh, the S10 was a little bit slow. It wasn't bad, but it was a little bit slow. Um, so that and also there's a sport mode. I have no clue. I, I was trying to figure out what this sport mode is. Um, I guess it's just for like, you know, and, and there was the, 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 uh, the, not the, uh, the video that was kind of showing you what it was. And I don't really understand what it is, but I'm guessing that it just makes the Osmo Mobile respond fast. I think that's what it does. Um, but you, I guess you could comment below if you have the Osmo 3 already and I'm, I'm, you know. But bear in mind, don't kill me for this because, I mean, I have to get it in-house in order to be able to test it as well. But as I said, sport mode, right? And uh, what else? Quick roll. Oh, so that's really, really cool because with the Osmo Mobile 2, you actually have to like change a little, you know, the circular knob and spin it from landscape into portrait mode. Now, I believe that the, the, the motors actually do that for you. So that's kind of cool. I think that would be convenient. I'm not too sure uh, if that actually makes sense while recording live because to me, if you're on landscape mode or vice versa port portrait and then you flip the phone around, the phone will stay in the settings that it was recording at. So for example, if it's recording at portrait mode like that, and then you all of a sudden turn it around, it's going to record sideways, which is going to defeat the point of the video. So I guess maybe you could use the quick roll with the story mode, um, and that's going to avoid that issue. But the cool thing, as I said, even for those of you who will not be recording, um, switching from portrait to landscape, because I don't see why you would do that in one shot while you're recording sing a single shot. Um, it's a lot quicker. It's supposed to be a lot quicker to to convert to the uh, portrait and landscape mode. So that's actually really, really cool. Um, for those of you who don't know anything about the Osmo Mobile 3, well, as you can see on this on the site, the first thing that they actually advertise, of course, is eliminating the shake. Uh, whether that is better than the Osmo Mobile 2, I'm a bit skeptical. I don't think that the upgrade... It's actually because the Osmo Mobile 2 uh, did a bad job at stabilization. I'll be very super surprised if the Osmo Mobile 3 does anything more than maybe 10% being better than the Osmo Mobile 2 in terms of elimination of shake. Uh, because the Osmo Mobile 2 does a really, really good job at it. So uh, it's something that if you <laughs> could get the Osmo Mobile 2 for cheaper and you just want it for... Uh, you know stabilization it's still a really good option as well as the fact that of course you could you, it actually has the ability to charge i believe this one has 15 hours the osmo mobile 3 has 15 hours the osmo mobile 2 i think it was 12 hours if not mistaken 
And um, of course, that's 12 hours using it, you know, you, uh, using the actual stabilization part. If you were to charge a device with it, 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 it it'll charge, it, it'll use up like maybe, you probably get like about an hour, maybe an hour and a half um, out of, you know, the drain, of, of the draining, you know, the draining, the, the charging, the draining of the battery. Um, so both of them have the same, you know, similar battery, uh, battery charging, different ports to charge as well too. So something to think about as well too. Um, and lastly, but really, really more important, most actually one of the most important things I nearly forgot to mention is that as you can see, the design has actually changed. <coughs> Excuse me. And what is happening in, with the design here is that it caters for wide angle lenses that are coming in with these new phones because these new phones, uh, they, the field of view is a whole lot wider. And that means that with the Osmo Mobile 2, that was an issue that I had using the S10e with it. The S10e has a wide angle lens. And so the, ang the, the lens is able to see part of the gimbal, which sucks because it actually spoils the uh, video if you don't zoom in. So one of the things you could do is actually zoom in, but optical zoom is probably better than digital zoom. And digital zoom would cause some blurriness. So the whole point is that the Osmo Mobile 3 will allow you to use uh, the wide angle lenses. It's supposed to use the wide angle lenses without it um, you know, showing up and spoiling your video footage. So that's definitely it. And I think I have covered most of um, the features. Uh, they're talking about the one tap templates. I think that's the story mode. Edit quickly. That's more the app, which is the Mimo app. And uh, let me see the gestures and selfies, which is supposed to be cool, as I said. And I think that is all oh, single handed control. Oh, and there's also it's also a little bit more ergonomic because what they did was they angled the actual hand piece. So I believe it's 15 degrees. So the Osmo Mobile, you had to hold the Osmo Mobile 2, you had to hold upright. Um, it's sort of, you know, it's it, it upright is fine, but it seems that a lot of people have been saying that this 15 degrees actually helps to keep your hand a little bit more uh, less tired. Um, so definitely something that I do. Uh, I, I would I would love to have because using it for an hour, I, I can tell. I can tell you that it actually sometimes it's a little bit not too bad it's still not bad the mobile 2 is still an excellent uh, gimbal um not just because i have it but because i've used it and it has not failed me um so yeah and that's pretty much it guys so i hope that this also helped you um to determine whether you want the osmo mobile 3. last but not least they actually added a trigger control to the front of the osmo mobile 3 which i think is cool i have not ever had a gimbal where I, I, I had a trigger control in the front, um, so this would be nice to test to see whether this is really, really um, worth it. But I think extra buttons are always good because um, it means that you don't have to interfere with an adjustment on the phone itself. You could just use, um, you know, the physical button to get things done. Um, there's also some ad additional stuff. I believe that there's like a triple button mode now that you can actually use as well too. All these things you'll probably have to read up as well because I don't want to keep this video too long. But I hope that um, for this price for $119, which was the price of the previous one, if not mistaken, $109 to $119 was the previous um, Osmo, which is the Osmo Mobile 2. Um, I don't. I, I think that's, that's well within the range of getting the upgraded app, uh, getting all the different pieces, uh, you know, the um, different features, the gesture control, definitely all these different things make it very much um, a cool thing to get. I'm wondering how much the Osmo Mobile 2 is going to go down by. I don't think DJI products really go down by a lot. So I'm thinking that maybe it may go down to be 89 US or so. Um, so I'm going to get it. So I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for viewing. Please like and subscribe. And hopefully I'll come out with another video soon with the review, uh, the actual hands-on review between both of them. Compare them out again and perhaps show some sample footage as well with that being said guys thank you so much for supporting and i'll see you guys again on another episode of rthd coming to a youtube screen near you take care bye bye. <music>